the happiest place on earth, not exactly the happiest. It's a little quiet right now. Disney parks around the world still shut. We're going on several months now due to the coronavirus. The parks, this is why it matters, make up 37% of the revenue last year that Walt Disney Company made. So as they prepare to announce their earnings in just a few minutes from now, we bring in a guy who bought his first share of Disney when he was 13 years old. Gerber Kawasaki CEO Ross Gerber joining us now. What? 10, 15 years later, right? Um, a little drunk <laughs> yeah. Ross. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Tell us about, you know, why we should take a chance on Disney when we know that, A, the theme parks are not close to opening entirely, and, B, the stock is at $101. It's well off its highs, but it's also off its lows. Well, that's why you got to buy it. I mean, th what worse could happen to Disney, you know, other than shutting every park and theater. So that's baked into the stock and it's only down, you know, 30% or something. And so when you think about what I get when things get back to what we will call the new normal, um, what an opportunity, because this has been a gift to Disney because even though they've had to shut down two very important parts of the, the company, those will open again, but they've been able to capitalize on direct to consumer streaming which is the future of Disney. And because of the pandemic, they've been able to just ramp subscriber growth of not just Disney Plus, but Hulu as well. And we're going to see blowout numbers from them uh, on the quarter. So while everybody is salivating over Netflix at, you know, 10 times revenue and several hundred times earnings, you know, Disney's got three streaming services. And eventually, trust me, all the parks will be open again. Okay. Okay, I get that, and I'm an optimist, and, and I'm big on buying low, certainly, but uh, we got to look at one of their biggest networks, the network of ESPN. There are no live sports, albeit except for Korean baseball. Uh, they did bring back live <laughs> Korean baseball this morning. <laughs> My son wasn't too excited. Uh, he kind of wants to see the Yankees, but um, I don't want to see the Indians, but... This, this, we don't know how this is going to end. There isn't any hockey right now. There's no football, at least for the moment. And it's just no tennis. And so ESPN. what? I mean, is there even going to be Wimbledon? That's ESPN carries that. Are freeze? not going to just be this. Okay. If our lives aren't going to be the same just, you know, automatically. So it's going to take till next mm -hmm. year. Think about live sports, the pent-up demand for live sports. I mean, look at the success they've had with The Last Dance, with the Michael Jordan story. It's been off the charts ratings. People want the content. So when you're talking about parks or you're talking about yeah, sports, true. when it comes back, the demand's going to be twice what it used to be. So uh, there's no asset I would rather own than ESPN when sports comes back. And that's why you got to buy low when things look really bad, like now. And then in a year, when we're watching baseball again and going to theme parks again, trust me, will be. You'll be like, "Wow, what an opportunity to have bought Disney!" And that's now. All right. Well, year to date is down about 29 percent, and I'm just looking. 52-week range. The high was 153. Yep, you're still buying it at a discount, everybody. 101.30. Ross Gerber of Gerber Kawasaki. Hey, listen, we're seeing green across the board here. Everything from silver to the Dow to the Nasdaq moving higher. I'll see you tonight, 6 p.m. on Twitter for futures trading.